Hey y'all, it's Cherise from Crazy Plants and Crazy Critters inviting you to our plant sale fundraiser this weekend. On the way in to show you what we have in stock, I thought I would show you our succulent garden out here. Uh, basically just to show you that it's cold, it's wet, but it looks okay. So don't stress out about your plants. We've, we're not going to bring this in just to show you guys what happens when you leave succulents alone out in the cold and wet. Oh, so it might be cold outside, but it is not cold inside because it's nice and toasty, so you really don't even need a jacket when you come to the greenhouse this weekend. Ken found some really lovely ground orchids. It's be hard to show you them all, but that's what you're going to find for ground orchids. And he has a few Philanopsis or moth orchids. And then uh, we'll just go along the shelves and we'll go from one thing to another. We have $4.50 air plants, larger Philanopsis or something. For ten dollars, we have some really nice sedum uh, donkey tail, string of dolphin, three string of hearts, those night blooming empitheliums that we're not really sure of. They have like this really interesting wiggly leaf. The dollar seventy-five section has a little bit in it. I'm not saying it's overloaded, but if you're wanting to create a garden for a gift, this is the time to come and get one because they are pretty. Our 250 section, our 350 section. Remember, sales tax is included because Ken and I pay the sales tax on every dollar that gets spent here. We have carnivorous plants, these little ground pitchers, small pitcher plants. We have the medium pitcher plants, one sundew. A bunch of small fly traps. We have seven dollar fly traps too, so if you're wanting a little more mature specimen to work with, we have those. So Crazy Plants Nursery is a place you can come to and you don't have to wear a jacket, but you do have to wear a mask. And back to carnivorous, we have the medium hanging pitchers too, and we have two different sizes of those. Some interesting ferns. There's a rabbit foot fern. So pretty. We have the hurricane fern. The crocodile fern. Can you even see that? See that crocodile fern? And some other ferns, I don't know what they are, but they'd be really great for a vivarium or terrarium setting. We have different bird's nest ferns too. Petticoat and lasagna noodle. I don't know what the name is, but that's what I call it. Looks like lasagna noodles. So we have kangaroo fern. Just really cool root structure and blue fern. We have Sweetheart Hoya, one speckled Hoya, and some really nice Crimson Queen Hoya at only ten dollars. We have one lovely scented Hoya and we have Jade Hoya and that's it in the Hoyas for this weekend so far. Um, but we do have a beautiful selection of prayer plants, Calathea Maranta plants including the Pinstripe, Green, the rattlesnake, the fuzzy leaf, and maybe musica, or I don't know that one very well. That one. This. Oh, and we had still a few reds for two dollars and fifty cents. How can you beat that? If you ever wanted to try to grow a prayer plant, that is the perfect cost. And if we stay with tropicals, we have. Philodendron Swiss cheese. We have jade pothis and moonlight pothis and neon pothis, golden pothis, and of course those scanopsis that you've heard me talking about on our Facebook page. Absolutely fabulous large specimens we have is this Kalankoe Fang. We have this really nice copper spoon, some larger flapjacks, 
a large euphorbia pencil cactus, some really neat large echeverias, and a whole bunch of others that you can use to create a succulent garden of your own. We have three euphorbia Madagascan Oh crap, are they euphorbias? I don't know. We have three Madagascan palms. I think they're euphorbias. I'll have to Google that. Basically we have a lot of different species of cactus that I don't know what they are, so I'm just going to put in a photo compilation right now and you can see them. That doesn't make you want to start collecting cactus. I don't know what will. Uh, look, we do have euphorbia. These are euphorbia for sure, I know. Um, crown of thorn. And look, Ken found a very delicate yellow bloom. And this one's a little bit brighter yellow. That might be the same plant with a newer or older bloom, but they're both just beautiful. And this one is pretty white. I don't know if it's white or if it's yellow white. So anyway, so other plants to collect are like the nerve plant. Look how lovely. Named nerve plant because the leaves look like the nerves throughout the human body. Just beautiful. One reason to collect them. Easy care another. We had these that had bloomed out in the nursery and so Ken had just trimmed them back. And look, they're coming back beautifully. So if yours get lanky or um, start to look weird, just do that and come right back. Rex begonias are pretty popular, and there's a few in here that are really collectible. We have already made up some Christmas gifts using uh, recycled farm finds, making gift giving easy and affordable. Including this cute little gift that is uh, completely donated. This is a dropped off pot, and a good supporter named Rita had donated some plants this week, and uh, we created that out of it. Donated plants help us do so much. We create so many things. We found this bowl while cleaning out the brown barn and stuck some little baby succulents in it, and now it's a gift all ready to give. Don't forget to buy a cactus pen. They're only a dollar donation and 100% of that money goes to the animal husbandry at Crazy Critters Inc. and they make a perfect stocking stuffer. If I can get it to focus. You get the point. All right, we're gonna stop at the edibles. Not that we have very many, but we're, we do have a few. You do wanna keep them protected during the cold weather, so don't plant them this week, but come buy them this week. We have dragon fruit, mulberries, pomegranate. We have some larger blueberries and some figs that are deciding to go dormant or not. We have dwarf super sweet pineapple, truly tiny bananas, dwarf cavendish. We have a loquat, some kiwi, some papaya, turmeric and ginger, but guess what? It's going dormant. And one chili in bloom. I think it might be jalapeno. Ken will know. If you come by it, Ken will know what it is. Alright you guys, this is Sharice Purvey and Ken Purvey from the Crazy Plants Nursery. We're located at 22919 County Road 44A, Eustis, Florida. Our hours this week are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 10 to 3. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are a cash-only, mask-mandatory destination where you know where all your proceeds go to. Because you watched how we took the proceeds of all the plant sales and all the donations last year and we built the 8-foot fence perimeter. We constructed Food Forest A, which looks stressed out right now, but we're not worried about it at all because we've really worked uh, using uh, horticulture, uh, permaculture ideas, so we know it's going to bounce back but we were able to afford 
Um, I think there's a hundred, over a hundred edible plants in for food forest. We then planted food forest B using better permaculture ideas and look it's barely stressed out, still providing food for the animals, hardly stressed. But we were able to afford all the edible plants in there through donations and plant sales. We upgraded the winter barn by having uh, it spray foamed and we added all the stalls inside housing the tortoises on cold days like this. And because of support, uh, we were able to not just upgrade the greenhouse that we sell plants out of, we upgraded our greenhouses this year for the animals, including a adding shade cloth to the uh, exterior of this. We closed this all in with tin, so it's all closed in up to Jamie's yard. We just have this one little row here to finish. When it got hot this year, we added a second row of shade cloth, cooling the greenhouse down. Now that it's cold, we'll be taking that off, heating it up. And on a cold day like this, this is uh, basically the best place for a turtle to be because it has not dropped below 70 degrees. Hold on, I gotta close the door so I can trap the heat in. So using the greenhouse theory, we've been able to create a, a pretty steady temperature in here uh, for most of the turtles. But there are some that need extra protection and stress out too much due to fluctuation of temperatures. So we cover their ponds with shade cloth, I mean frost cloth, and that really traps more heat in there, keeping those ponds very, very warm. We appreciate you guys when you come down to the greenhouse. We know the mandatory mask thing really sucks. We actually had a supporter donate masks just so we would have them and we wouldn't have to turn anybody away. But uh, we depend on you guys because all of these animals also depend on you guys for coming out and maybe purchasing your next Christmas gift. Just a real win-win when a simple plant purchase can help us do so much for so many. Come on, put on a mask and help us continue to build crazy critters.